Good afternoon on what is a bright, warm and sunny day. It is Thursday the 19th of May and I have a nice hot cup of tea. Parcel to unbox. So I'll just get a knife out. Packaging. Uh, I can't see what's inside, but the colours look a bit familiar, so what I have is uh, this root, uh, okay, that's not coming off, anyway, root the role playing game, uh, core book, a game of woodland adventure. Uh, this is published by Magpie Games, um, and so I'm just going to get some paper off my fingers. And let me see. Uh, and it's I'm also done with leader games because it's based upon a board game. Um, now, Root uh, was a, has been a big hit in um, uh, in the board gaming community. Uh, it's again, it's a woodland war. It's a well, a woodland war game. Um, based around um, asymmetrical powers so that every kind of faction has different powers and abilities uh, and they are warring for control of the woodland. So, war has returned to the woodland. Uh, the Marquise de Cat ha led her armies to victory over the ma many of the clearings uh, but the the eerie dis dynasties rise again to oppose them. Meanwhile, the mice, rabbits and foxes of the woodland do not sit idly by. The Woodland Alliance, a homegrown rebellion, has emerged, promising to free the woodland from any oppressors. In the midst of this war, you and your friends, vagabonds all, travel between the clearings, taking on jobs no one else can or will do. You choose whom you serve, if anyone. But if, but if everyone knows that you may... Um, but everyone knows you may tip the balance of the war. Root the Role Playing Game is the officially licensed tabletop role playing game based upon the award winning Root, a game of woodland might and right board game by Leader Games. In Root the RPG, you play vagabonds, individual outlaws whose adventures and alliances define the woodland forever. Here's what you'll find inside the book nine unique playbooks, each built to help you create a vagabond whose exploits will echo in the woodland for generations to come. Easy to follow rules for all manner of fantasy adventure, including roguish feats, reputation and travel mechanics, and more. Uh, in innovative uh, mechanics for managing equipment, weapons and combat that make your choices matter both tactically and narratively. Right, uh, detailed guide instructions for running Root the RPG, crafting combats, managing factions and more um, alongside a full clearing, Galila's Grove. Root the, the, is a fantasy adventure tabletop role playing game for 36 players of woodland creatures fighting for money, justice and freedom for powers far greater than them. Fame and glory await. So it's essentially the that we've got um, uh, number of players, three, six, and um, time, two to four hours, and rating, it's suitable for everyone. Let's open here now. Go. So this is a really popular kit, uh, really proved to be really popular on Kickstarter. Um, not the biggest Kickstarter, but um, Magpie Games had. They did very well with their avatar and um, Kickstarter, of course. Um, but anyway, so um, what route uh, the basically um, so it was basically the route uh, game of Woodland Might and Might the board game and route the role playing game share is this artwork, which is actually fantastic. It is who's the artwork artist? Let's see if I can find out. Um, it's Carl Ferrin and it's really trick and it's going to be it's going to be found throughout the pages of this book and as you can see here's an illustration of the um, pre basically some of the types of characters you can play um, and I've already looked at um, the releases that uh, Magpie Games have done for Root uh, specifically for RP free RPG day and that's coming up quite soon as I as I sit here but uh, over the course the previous two free RPG days. Magpie Games have done not one but two different um, 
uh, free RPG Day titles, and that's really kind of, you, you didn't even need to do that, but it sort of like it helps keep the game alive, got people interested in it and wanted to play it. But here, the rule book is finally here. So we've got the table of contents um, with a raccoon uh, just eating before he's about to set out and contemplating an adventure. He's got a map open there. Nice bit of character, character illustration before we get into a discussion of you know, what is a role playing game, what is a root, why they, why um, they are, what and what makes root the role playing game unique, and how does tabletop role playing uh, games work, trials and adventures, that sort of thing. So solid, decent introduction there, I should imagine. Before we getting uh, into description of the, the setting, we do have um, quick um, advice on. Uh, playing with safety, playing with the use of safety tools, that's fine. You know, it's it, 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 um, it's there. Don't, but doesn't belabor the point. Uh, and here it tells you what you're going to need. Um, so dice, two dice, so basically uh, two six-sided dice each. Playbooks, basically printing out the copies of the uh, character types in the game before getting into a discussion of, um, the, of what the woodland, woodland is and its nature. So we've got, you know, all the way sort of discussion, um, things covering, you know, the history of the woodland, control of the woodland, um, at, uh, and also pointing out that in the section lions and tigers and bears, oh my, uh, that all the denizens of the woodland are anthropomorphic animals. Um, at, uh, um, but when you think about which animals can be found as denizens, uh, uh, stick to animals no bigger than a wolf in the real world. Bigger animals like bears, moose, deer and more are either rather largely absent uh, or hidden from the woodland or they occupy a different role, stranger, more mysterious and more dangerous. Uh, bears are similar to the trolls or ogres of other fantasy settings, deer something like spirits, moose are akin to huge dragons and so on. But there's, there's, just, there's no essential truth here, no mystical reason for why those animals aren't denizens, no ancient secret to uncover. It's just part of the fable setting and root the RPG. The same way you shouldn't worry about how a cat came to stand up right and use his paws like hands, you shouldn't worry about why a bear is a dangerous monster in the forest. That's really kind of simple. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't tie the, the, the game master down to anything, it doesn't tie the players down to a particular set of myths. Um, Okay, so we get into the discussion of, sort of the Grand Civil War, the Interbellum, the invasion, and the War of the Woodland, and the rise of the Alliance. So all events are essentially leading up to the situation where the Woodland and the player characters find themselves, uh, including the present war and its factions. Uh, and then we get on to the one faction that isn't a faction, which is the Vagabonds, because it's made up of individuals. Um, and then we have on to the fundamentals. Um, and the first thing is, is the fundamentals, and here's the fundamentals of role playing, the conversation. Because essentially, if you think about it in play, that's what role playing is. Uh, you have a conversation between um, you and the, uh, and the game master and you and the other players about what you can see, what, 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 so what your character can see, what your character can do, how they interact with the uh, world that, the, that is being described. Um, and then you move on, essentially we've got a discussion of framing scenes, but you get onto the sort of what do you do? And that's a nice basic, basic solid introduction. It's really coming down to, again, to the like, first principles and the idea really behind what role playing is. And that isn't aimed at the likes of you or me, but it is aimed at people who are coming across from the board game. Um, more than anything, because obviously uh, Root is based upon a Root, a game of woodland might and right, so people are going to be interested, oh I like this board game, I'm going to get interested in how I want to have a look at Root, the role playing game, what's different about that? Um, so you have that kind of discussion there, uh, and which is, you know, serving a useful um, purpose, um, and um, essentially um, and also sort of like coming down to forget what those conversations are about, which is the fiction of the game. At, uh, and, and the fact that it's, what involves there is a shared understanding of what that game and its fiction is. And that's really kind of, as I say, it's fundamental. But it's not something we necessarily frame it like that um, all the time. Uh, but, but again, um, that really is very basic, but, um, but useful. 
and then get into preparing for play, woodland expectations and so on. Um, and how it's close to medieval, but with a hint of the fantastic. Um, and heroism with an edge, focus on the vagabond bound, a bound and so on. Um, and yes, the question of why do you play? Um, and there are any number of reasons there. Um, but here we go. So, for example, uh, so what will Root the RPG do for you that is special to it that you won't necessarily find elsewhere? Why play? Because you get to play cat adventurers, bird warriors, mouse thieves, uh, and fox con artists, all in a world filled with animal characters ranging from heroic to villainous and everything in between. Because you get to tell stor the story of awesome, chaotic, skilled, with surprising characters having adventures across an ever changing landscape. Because you have to get to change that landscape, the wooden will respond to your character's actions, good and bad, driving your choices home to you. Because you stand against dangerous powers, keeping innocents safe from their oppression, and come through victorious, if not unscathed. Because telling dramatic stories about skilled and capable characters in tense situations is a path to moving, funny, involving and exciting moments. And because you want to go on capers, have heists and rebel against tyranny, all in a world that might actually respond to your actions, and because the woodland is in danger and you and your friends may be its greatest hope if you can avoid burying yourselves in trouble first. So, as I say, first going back to first principles, asking questions, asking and answering questions that not every role-playing game does, and that's refreshing. That is really going, this is going back to fundamentals. Okay, so um, get on to creating vagabonds. So yeah, creating our vagabonds, uh, make or making vagabonds, and these are built around the playbooks, which will probably come up in a bit. So and you basically just choose a playbook and fill out the detail with it: name, species, details, demeanour, and so on. Um, answering questions about your character uh, and supported with examples as well. But, uh, um, and looking at the stats, so you have charm, cunning, finesse, luck, uh, and might, um, natures and drives, all part of the character, character you're going to play, but really here we've got a good guide to how to do it. Connections, not just to you, not just to sort of like your, your, other, your fellow player characters, but obviously potentially to um, NPCs. Um, your faction reputation, with the different factions available in, uh, available in the setting. And then you look at things like your moves. Now your moves are your actions. So they're going to be like a standard set of, of, of moves because essentially what I haven't said is this is, power, this is based upon a, um, a rule set um, called Powered by the Apocalypse. Um, and you have moves and you have a general set of moves that everyone can do. Then you'll have a, a set of moves that are sign uh, part of your signature um, uh, set of, of actions. Um, okay, um, we have equipment and so on. We have a vagabond band, daring exploit. So there's something you can all you do as a group, I should imagine. Uh, and then that's so essentially we have everything we get onto ready for adventure. And here we have an expression of how the game works using moves in play. So we have the types of moves. Um, hold, forward and ongoing. So weapon moves are things like engage in melee, target someone, grapple with someone, um, so on. Um, we have like a roguish feats and there'll be a variety of things. So roguish feats might be acrobatics or blindside, counterfeit, disabled device, sleight of hand, sneak and so on. So you are, let's say, um, you're playing anthropomorphic um, um, thieves as it were. Um, you have options for things like figuring someone out or persuading an NPC. So we have a, generally a good range of abilities um, and these are going to be all very clearly presented on your character sheet. Um, and you can do things like trust fate, basically just trust it to the um, to the result of the dice roll or wreck something if you're um, that way inclined help or interfere so that's kind of like a support move and then we have weapon moves which is uh, essentially where you leap into combat and, um, but, uh, so basically so engage it in melee um, target someone grapple an enemy 
again, it's simple that they, they're clearly explained, they're given an example in each case, um, everything you would want to see. Um, you might target someone, so if you're um, um, good with a missile weapon, you can cleave them, disarm them, harry a group, improvise a weapon, parry, uh, quick shot, um, storm a group, take a quick, quick shot, quick shot, uh, um, a trick shot. See so if you're really good at that, sort of like an archery. Um, make a, uh, make a, um, a Victoria strike and so on. And then at the end of it, we've got uh, essentially prestige, uh, which is your reputation. So you, you have also um, notoriety as well. Um, you can ask for a favor, meet someone important, all moves which your character can have. Um, and then go to sort of like travel moves to be able to travel along a path. So yeah, I mean, a huge variety of different moves um, and uh, your player can under, 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 undertake. And then we have uh, session moves, moves that happen at the end of a session. Um, to, and then we get onto the playbooks themselves. So we have adventurers, arbiters, um, harriers, rangers, ronin, scoundrels, thieves, tinkers, and vagrants. So there's the adventurer. Right, uh, and, and then for each of these, each of these playbooks, we have a list of the moves for that character, uh, in, in addition to the basic moves um, and background questions that you will also answer as part of the process of creating a character. Um, so let's have a look. Um, the, the adventurer, you're a peaceful diplomatic uh, vagabond making allies with those you aid, perhaps toppling greater powers by forging strong bonds with others. Uh, the arbiter, you're a powerful obstinate vag vagabond serving as somewhere between a mercenary protector, perhaps taking tight sides too easily in the greater conflict between the factions. Um, the Harrier, your quick, enterprising vagabond, racing easily from building to building and clearing to clearing without any one stop, anything stopping you, perhaps finding yourself in places where others would keep, others would rather keep secret or hidden. So that's the Harrier. Uh, the Ranger, your capable, stealthy vagabond, centred on forests that fill the woodland between the clearings and more interested in the wild than in the company of other woodland den denizens or their society. The Ronin, your skilled, willful vagabond, formerly a servant of a lord in a different land, now masterless. You come to the woodland to live as a free vagabond. Uh, the Scoundrel, you're a lucky, dangerous vagabond, acting more as a destroyer and troublemaker than anything else, perhaps creating chaos and destruction for its own sake. Um, scoundrel movies, for example, you've got explosive personality, trait to destroy, it's a distraction, daredevil, danger mask, better lucky than good. So they're all those are all particular to, to the vagabond, or the scoundrel, sorry. The thief, you're a cunning criminal vagabond, capable of stealing even the most well-guarded treasures, perhaps committed to crime and theft for its own sake. Uh, then we have the tinker, you're a depth clever vagabond, interested in mechanisms and craftsmanship, perhaps possessed of ideas that separate you from those around you. The Vagrant, you're a charming survivor vagabond, using words to get out of dangerous situations, even setting possible predators upon each other to keep them away from yourself. Um, so that's all, all the, 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 the um, vagabond um, character types. Then we have an um, advancement from the equipment section, um, and so on, you know, so basically advancements. Your advancement following uh, by following a drive or choose one from the list, you increase the stat, take a new move from your playbook, take a new move from another playbook, um, increase weapon skills, roguish and uh, take it roguish feats and um, increase your harm track, which is the amount of damage you can take, and even um, add your add connections. You can change your character, um, so on so there's advice on there, then we go into equipment. Uh, the gear, so that's going to be quite a reasonably lengthy section, um, and all they have, all the equipment has tags which can be positive and negative, and they come into play, and it's got a guide there for inventing your own. But for the most part, you're going to be uh, t um, taking. So there we go, inventing your own tag side. Um, you're going to be taking off, you know, pre-made equipment. And here we've got a list of it, and that goes on for a few pages. Uh, 
chat. And then for the Game Master, we have Running the Woodland. Um, but, uh, um, we have what the game do GM does portray the world beyond the vagabonds, educate the rules, pace create and diffuse drama, um, handling agendas, all good advice in there. Um, but, uh, and things to always say, principles and when they come into play. Um, and think, so, you know, here we have the principles of the game. So we describe the world like a living painting. Address yourself to the characters, not the players. Be a fan of the vagabonds. Make your move, but misdirect. Sometimes disclaim decision making. Make the factions and their rich constant presence. Give denizens drives and fears. Follow the ripples of every major action. Call upon the, the, the state and reputation of the city of the vagabonds. Bring danger to seemingly safe settings. And the GM has her own moves. So, you know, someone, which happened when, uh, when to make GM moves, when someone rolls a miss or someone hands you a golden opportunity, things slow down and you have sort of softer and harder moves and then a guide to using them as well. So a quick, quick um, um, basic diagram, and, uh, moves list, so inflict injury, exhaustion, wear, depletion or morale, reveal an unwelcome truth. Show signs of an approaching threat. Capture someone. Put someone on the spot. To disrupt someone's plans and schemes. Make an offer. Make them an offer to get their way. Show them what a faction thinks of them. Turn their move back on them. Activate the downside of the background repetition or equipment. Um, and then after every move, ask the question, "What do you do?" So they're all explained there as well. Turn. We've got a guide to NPCs. To support those moves because obviously they're going to come through come into play as well through sometimes through those moves and we're followed by a set of baseline uh, NPCs but, uh, and handling fight scenes um, a lovely bit of illustration there just like moving a cat statue there we go I do like that um, and a guide to portraying NPCs with um, a really nicely fully worked out example there, I note. I mean, this is this is the book is full of good examples, but this goes on. That's that's sort of like that's two and a half um, pages, and then things to do when you're not busy because there are going to be moments when you, as a GM, as a gunmaster, where you're going, all right, okay, fine. The players are chatting amongst themselves, and you've got half area on them, and here's a guy with what to do when that's happening, and then. And we've got a guide to the woodland of war, which is the basic current situation. Um, and then how to create woodland and its clearings, because clearings essentially are adventure locations and and, and, and communities. Um, and basically how to build them, how to build the connections there, and how powerful they are, and so on. Um, so that's almost sort of something that the, the, the game master is going to be doing pr prior to. Um, to, to, to actually starting a campaign um, and then uh, fleshing out your, your clearings um, which does sound a bit boo but there we go um, <laughs> uh, conflicts and issues and handling war is also discussed in this section adding important um, residents so we've got some examples there um, and more so lots of NPCs, quite a handful of NPCs there, um, and so on. So there's basically already, and then essentially introducing the clearing um, and the connections and so on, and getting the characters involved, or the vagabonds involved in the situation. So, and then we've got a, just a short index there. Okay, so yeah, that's Root the Court Rulebook um, from Magpie Games. Hoping to get a review of that done soon. Uh, there'll be a link down below, of course. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching another unboxing in the look. If you've enjoyed this, do please click on the like button down below. And of course, if you've got any comments or feedback, appreciate you taking the time to post those. And lastly, if you want to be alerted to yet more unboxings in the nook, where you will see me um, with um, Parcel and a book or game which I will extract a box and then chat about to the best extent of my knowledge for roughly 10 minutes or so, all of course accompanied by a nice hot cup of tea. then please do hit that subscribe button down below. 
Thanks again for watching. I'll be back again soon with another unboxing in the nook. Bye for now.